Hello and welcome to the Sarah High School Football Podcast. I'm here with Patrick Walsh again. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good, good. Yep. You're coming off another uh, wonderful win. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it's always nice to, to win the homecoming game. Exactly, you know, exactly. Homecoming. I think it makes uh, people coming back happier. Well, there were like, I think, um, I think there were like 3,500 people here on wow. Friday night. Yeah. So uh, we had our homecoming weekend starting with the Hall of Fame on Thursday, then our homecoming game Friday, seven o'clock against Midi, and Sunday was the reunion. But um, the main, the main show was definitely the game, and uh, the final score was 35-7. We sent Midi home with their first loss of the season, um, and they were two teams coming in at five and zero, oh, so it was going to be. Started out to be a very exciting match, and uh, and we held them him pretty well, certainly till the the last quarter. So, can you talk about the game a little bit? Yeah, I'm, it's funny you mentioned all these wonderful things that happen around campus, and I always I always say to my other coaching friends or people who ask me, I said the worst part about football season is that it's during football. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, that's true. There's a lot of fun. Yeah, everyone's having the greatest time tri-tip ever. Tri-tip sandwiches. Yeah, how was that? Niners here. Yeah, the Delish. Niners were here. The really tri-tips good. were good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Homecoming <laughs> seemed to go well. There's 3,500 people there. Like, I could, not that I don't care less, I'm sorry, but I had no idea any of that stuff's happening. Your buddy James Outman was there in the yeah. alumni tent. Yep. Yeah. Now, that's a problem that Outman didn't come and say hi, and amongst other people, I guess they think I'm working and whatever, but... I'm sure they would want to. I'm Trust me. Yes, that's I know. Cool. Well, that was really nice to have uh, James back. I heard, you know, we got the L.A. Dodger. I don't know. Do people actually like Outman? I, I think the they Dodgers? love him, yeah. They okay. don't like the, that he plays for the Dodgers, but with the performance on his first um, at bat in the right. majors, I think that nobody can say anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's right, and then you know I know there's a lot of Giants fans, but the fact that a Padre is playing for the Dodgers, I guess we'll get over it. And coming back, yeah, for and homecoming. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah, the football season's crazy. It's just it's always. I, I look forward to. I don't look forward to retirement because I, it's so enjoyable. But you know, for coaches, we're so immersed in it that it's hard to actually enjoy it, which is kind of sad. At the same time, but um, I'm glad everybody had a good time. I thought. Once again, the star of our, our team was the defense, probably, as, as a whole. Did a wonderful job. Um, do, uh, you know, we had three turnovers on offense, which is never fun. Right. Um, but we're growing. We're, we're, we're young, and there's different people in different spots. And turnovers are the, are the fastest way to ruin any great vibe. So you have to always balance turnovers with reality. Turnovers are the ultimate reality. You either have the ball or you don't. Mm-hmm. But the, sometimes – Turnovers happen like against De La Salle. I mean, we drove in at 70 yards and then turned the ball over inside the five. While that's awful, you also drove the ball 70 yards. So, right. okay, let's try to stay positive here. But <laughs> it's the funniest thing. Uh, turnovers come down to the understanding that the ball is more important than your life at that point. <laughs> I say that I in that. jest, um, but it's kind of true. The person that owns the ball, has the ball, has the entire stake of the organization in their hands at that moment pressure okay sure or just an understanding that reaching out for an extra yard may not be worth it or you know there's a bad exchange fall on the ball or take a sack or just decisions that you can make and then there's fundamentals of it that uh, proper way to hold the ball keep the ball on the outside arm all sorts of things that, that we talk about that that is basically very important. Now, on the flip side of the ball, we had some takeaways. We had some good interceptions. Marley had Teddy a pick. Teddy too. Teddy yeah. had two picks. And so we were taking the ball away as well. So it's nice to have that balance. And that's where turnover ratio comes in. We, we gave it away three times. We took it away three times. We were at zero. So we evened it out. A lot of people talk about turnover ratio as a, as a deciding factor in games. And a lot of times it is. If we had three takeaways and didn't turn it over three times uh, or vice versa, mm-hmm. then um, it, it, uh, it wouldn't have been as positive. But I thought the defense overall played extremely well, uh, flying around the football field, making plays. We have a lot of talent over there, a lot of experience. You know, this is three-year guys who are still juniors making a lot of plays. And um, I, I thought Timo Paloka did a great job at nose guard. He did. And he did. He's amazing. He He's did, he really coming to his job. own. He, yeah. He really, he really is. And, um, and then, you know, he had a tough week in, in certain areas and he was coached and coached and coached and coached and, and, and coddled and coached, coached meaning maybe <laughs> yelled at a couple times, <laughs> but he can take it. And I, it was really nice to see him have such a great game. Seamus obviously played great on defense. Um, 
you know, there, there was there's just a lot of stars over there on the defensive side of the ball. I've seen Teddy as a sophomore and made a couple picks, and one was picked off his shoelaces. And, you know, we won't have to talk about him slipping and falling and not scoring. <laughs> and I know he, but Teddy, oh, he takes everything so personal. So, Teddy, we love you. You did a great job. Definitely. The fact that you actually made the catches on the interceptions He's is huge. He's a star, Get yes. the ball. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, um, Maui threw for 215 yards with two touchdowns to Villa Roman and to McGovern. We also saw um, Gastrock score, man. I mean, just wonderful offense as well. Yeah. I'll continue to agree with you with the defense. And we saw last game was amazing too. So this, I mean, this defense is like really unflappable. It's amazing to watch it's them strong. rise. Um, and the offense is doing great too. You want to talk a little bit about the offense first? Yeah, sure. I, I, I think Coach Bell's doing a great job. I, I think it's funny in, in today's world, there's expectations because of social media and there's, there's so many things that, that goes into like the profile of high school sports has elevated to a point where we're watching games on ESPN and all these crazy things. And at the end of the day, they're still kids. I know. You know, it's they're, they're crazy. 15, 16, 17, 18 year old kids that are that are developing. And a lot of the times the expectations in the timeline of the public or other people is ahead of where people should be. Malawaki Smith has started five varsity football games. Right. And, and by all accounts, by all measurements, he's doing a great job. 100%. He's doing a great job. Is there a room for improvement? Absolutely. Are there decisions that that he made at this game that he's not going to make in the future because he's learning through experience? Absolutely. And that's the beauty of it. And that's where I love this game and seeing people progress, whether you are in the, you know, let's call it, you know, Maui's in the spotlight. You know, he's a quarterback. He's ranked high, all these stars, whatever. Remember we talked about well, it last Absolutely time. did, Who yes. cares? I mean, at, at, for us or for, for Coach Bell and our staff, it's, it's all about improvement and how our players are taking the responsibility of being in the position they're playing applying it to their trade and being the best they can be. And, and offensively, you cannot talk about the San Francisco 49ers without talking about the quarterback position. Trey Lance went down, now Garoppolo's in, and you talk about Sarah, you're going to talk about Malawaki Smith. And it's Absolutely. just a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> And that's why like, the first thing I ask someone who's a quarterback is, do you want to be a quarterback? And they're like, yeah. Like, why? <laughs> Explain to me why you want to be a quarterback because there's a lot that goes into being – I think it's the, the most difficult position to play – in any sport on the planet, in my opinion, is a quarterback. So maybe goalie in hockey, because you're getting that ball shot at you. And if you have a bad night, your team loses. I mean, that's, there's, an equal there's a pain <laughs> element there, too. I'd be, I'd be a little more scared about my yeah. teeth and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. Weird. I mean, that, that thing's coming at you quick. But, you know, you, you, you watch the teams in, in hockey. I don't know why I'm talking about hockey, but I'm just thinking about position. The hockey goalie has the great, great playoff run. The team wins. Same thing with the quarterbacks. Right. You know, and vice versa. If the guy's giving up goals, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know. So I, I Intense pressure and, in you know, correct. Monday morning quarterbacking, right? Co that, that's, a, that's a thing. Thank you. It's not Monday morning right guarding. Right, exactly. What the right guard do that <laughs> night? No one even knows there's a guard on a team. Exactly. Like, <laughs> no offense. But that, that's the point. I mean, someone's mom in the stands is like, my, my, my kid plays guard. But no one on right. the outside is looking at the – that guard but, that night? Yeah, exactly. Correct. Well, the quarterback, the, mom. <laughs> the quarterback the mom. touches the ball every play, and that's why. Exactly. I mean, it's easy to follow the ball in football. It's hard to follow everything else. So, and they're blamed too, right? They're they're blamed for uh, the the win they or the loss. Be. That's they right. can be. I mean, they shouldn't be, but I mean, it's a team sport. But I'm right. just saying that you know, public opinion sometimes does. You know, oh, if he had done I that, think this it's was like, last year, Amy. We talked about the record of the right guard is not kept. The record of a starting quarterback is kept. Yes, I think I do remember that conversation. Yeah. Anyway, so well, I, I think, and our special teams played, you know, solid. Coach Ortiz is doing a good job there. I mean, special teams is you you don't necessarily you want it to be in the spotlight if you're scoring touchdowns. You don't want it to be in the spotlight for the wrong reasons. And I think we're we're doing a really good job on, on the special team side of the ball. So we actually were two for four on, on special teams, four for four on defense of our Great. goals, and we were two for four on offense. We we were a little bit inefficient with some with the turnovers, balls on the ground, a couple penalties that led to us not getting our 12% efficiency goal. Um, and we had three three uh, turnovers. So right. four for four, two for four, two for four. That's four, six, eight of 12. That's so good. we're trending. Yeah. The goal, the goal is to be at 75% because our goals are really hard to attain. So people, you would think you want 100%, which we want, but it's only happened one time in the history of our school. So all the great teams of the past have finished the year right around 75% goal achievement. So we're under that right now. We're at 65%. We have room for improvement. Awesome, and we're we're hitting about the uh, halfway point in the WCAL, right? Yeah, I mean with uh, the season, we're the season, right? Yeah. The the current league season, right? Um, awesome. Well, I mean, it was a wonderful game. 
such great playing. I mean, it's so fun to watch people. I mean, like you said, the forty, the couple forty yeah. ers were here to check it out because it was, was cool. the best game playing. You know, so yeah. um, so hats off to your team. Everybody has such um, a dedication and and and. and you know, just so much value and worth on that team. So hats off to all of them. Um, some stupid penalties that I'm sure next week we won't see, or tomorrow we won't yeah, see. Um, in one of the papers, I know you don't read them, but I do, um, you're quoted as saying that um, every team in the WCAL, because we are playing at the, the rate that we're playing, mm -hmm. that is their A game. It is the, the big game for them. And um, and naturally your, your response to that was saying that, um, so you've got to keep your guys mature. Can you kind of explain that a little bit and tell us, you know, how that applies to the, the rest of the league Season. Yes, yes. Um, well, ego is the enemy, and a lack of maturity will be the result of, of an egotistical environment. And it's, it's very easy to get egotistical when people are telling you you're great all the time. Mm -hmm. um, no one really cares about that in week six. They might have cared about it in week five, and we, but the season's not over. We have week six, now we're playing Bellarmine. Bellarmine's a longtime rival of the school. Bellarmine's intent on <laughs> beating us. There's no doubt about it. And those guys, when they when we play each other, the last two all-boys schools in our league, I talked to our, our, our team about it. This is, you know, everyone else is, you know, tapping out on the on the all-boys thing, and we're not, and neither is Bellarmine. Right. And it means something. This is a historical game for our schools. It's a historical game for me in the sense that, uh, you, you know, Bellarmine lost to them seven times in a row or six or seven times in a row, and it was just absolute misery. And... Um, there's, I don't really care. You throw records out the window, and, and I've watched their games, and they're, they're a really prideful, good football team. It reminds me a lot of Mitty. And they had a couple more losses coming into this, but that doesn't matter. You throw all that out the window when you, when you play Bellarmine High School. And Jalal Beachman has uh, played there, beat us. He's an amazing player. He's a, a, a great Bell. And he's bringing that, that pride of being a Bellarmine Bell into that school. And I can see it and how they play. saw it last year. You see it now. Those guys believe. Right. And that's a that's a frightening thing. We're going back on the road, going down there to play on the road again. And it's it's just a it's a tough place to be. It's a tough place to play. And if we don't handle this with maturity, immature, things happen off campus. And, you know, to me, I, I talked about this team as, as a as a current, as a river. And we're flowing in a certain direction. Individuals can divert the course of that river. Individuals cannot be on the river if they choose not to be. But either way, we are headed in a direction that we are going. And we want the souls and we want the individuals and the people that are all in that want to jump in that current and come with us. Mm -hmm. And those that don't, we don't have to be with us. Totally. It's a choice. Life is a choice. Right? And I would like to say that there's, there, I would like all of our kids to choose and make the right decisions, but sometimes they don't. And They're kids. They're kids. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is, is to know what you have as an individual and embrace those things that you have as an individual, be grateful for them and hang on to them. Right. You know, these are fleeting times. These, these are fleeting times. And particularly for a high school student, I mean, these, these times run like horses over the hill, gone. And you're going to look back and you're either going to enjoy each moment of them when you're 47 years old, or you're going to look back and say, man, I really regretted that decision. And I just remind the team as much as I can, you don't want to have any regrets in your life. You really don't. Totally. Right? And we are where we are because of all the things that we've done together. Why go throw that away? You know, it takes a million years to polish a rock and five seconds to throw it away. It's gone. Mm -hmm. One decision. So that's what, you know, to me, we, we talked about ego is the enemy and challenging that, and that's just the way it is. And, and I've always said, you know, sometimes getting punched in the mouth and losing is a healthy thing. And if that's what this team needs, then that's what we'll get. And right. Bellerman's intent on giving that to us. So... You know, I'm not a loser. I don't plan on losing. I don't. <laughs> right, of course. But I'm not afraid of it either. Sure. I'm not. I, I don't have any fear of, of pain. I don't have any fear of, of losing. Um, as a matter of fact, sometimes pain is the best teacher. Um, and I'm just hopeful that we can avoid that through maturity, which is what I'm referencing here. Right. Through maturity, where we can understand that we're going to learn our lessons doing it the right way and learning our lessons and making sure that we are taking the right steps and doing the right things so we have more points than the other team. Awesome. So that's the thing about football. I love it. Well, I love the analogies with the river and the rock, and so, um, I, and I agree with those. So um, bell, the Bells are 3-2. and two. They're coming off a three-game winning streak. Um, they, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, on Saturday they beat Reardon 3-0. to zero. Three zip. That sounds like a very long game. Throwback? No, a very short game. Three zip. I mean, for those who are watching it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> I just mean like, oh, no one's scoring. But <laughs> right, right. But it's probably short <laughs> in duration answer. because yes. it's they're running <laughs> the ball. There's right. not a lot of scoring. Short in terms of the 48 minutes. But I meant long as for oh, like gotcha. a very low scoring game. Well, it depends on how you look at football. I, I saw a brilliant defensive stands. game. <laughs> I like defense. I saw a brilliant defense. I was looking for a attractive game. sandwich, right? <laughs> um, and then SI, 34 to 14 on September 23rd. Um, do you know, have you seen them play? How do they mm-hmm. look? I yeah, mean, I mean, we've, so... At the beginning of the season after week three, I said everyone's 0-0. Well, Bellarmine's 2-0 and and Sarah's 2-0. and We're not 5-0 and and 3-2. and it does, it, There's no right. – we're both undefeated in the league. So you want to do football math, that's yep. the football math yep. I'm doing. I mean, that's someone's right. coming out of here 3-0 and and someone's 2-1. and Someone's going to be a, in the top of the league standings and someone's not. So, again, this is always – thickens the plot when it comes to the Sarah Bellerman game. I love this game. I mean, I hate it and I love it at the same time. Um, but it's, they, I see what I always see in a, in a Bellerman team and they got great talent. They got number three is a quarterback. Number 54 is a D lineman. Who's amazing. Their two linebackers are, are, they make like, it's, it seems as if no one has a plan to block them, which everyone does. Right. But they always seem to be making every play. Number 33 and number five, fantastic players. I'm very concerned about them. They fly around the field. They make a ton of plays. It's going to be a challenge for our offensive line. Um, again, 54 is strong. He played against us last year, made a ton of plays. It's going to test out our, our offensive line once again. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, they run a ton of formations on offense. They're always moving around. It's going to be a test on our defensive fits. How is our eyes? What are we looking at? We've, I've seen free runners for them where people's eyes get messed up because of their motions and trades, and guys are running right down the middle of the field untouched. So wow. there's – you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of challenges in this game. They have a great kicking game. They've got a punter that I've seen him punt the ball 50 yards. Oh, gosh. Right. So, I mean, it, it's, a, it's another great test, and this is why I love this league. Right. I love this league, and I have so much respect for our colleagues in this league. I have so much respect for, for all the coaches and everyone that, you know, we, look, we, California football is different than other states. It's a little bit different, and, but not in our league. Our league is similar to, like, a Texas where – Everybody cares all the time. And these guys that I'm referring to, Bellerman, Jalal, and his staff, yep. these guys are all pretty much ex-Bells. You know, they think about football in January and February and March and December and June. They think about it all year round. And that's why if we're not up for a challenge, then we are going to go to that pit and learn and, and hopefully get better from it. If we are up to the challenge and we do show that maturity, then we'll see. Yep. Yeah. Great. Well, we play Bellarmine tomorrow at 7 o'clock at Bellarmine, and um, our boys will be gearing up for um, success through a prune rally tomorrow, yep. which is a, a long, uh, long-standing tradition. Long so I think tradition. a lot of people are excited about that, and, um, yeah. and we're excited to see what you do on the field. So thank you for your time, and yeah. uh, go You're Padres. Welcome. Let's go.